if you watch this video, watch it to the end because, um, you know, I, 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 I at least get the satisfaction. I'm going to show you th how the cat cult reached America. I'm going it, it is the Vishnu cult. I'm going to show you how the, the Shiva cult dominates among the Parakas long skull mummies. So stay tuned. You're going to love it. Hey everyone, how are we doing? And it appears we are making another video. Well, 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 there we go. Because I've just made a cool discovery. I think you should see it. Brian Forster, who, as you know, is a great man, done great work in uh, finding that the skulls of uh, the, the long skulls, the paracus skulls, came, these people came from the Black Sea down through Turkey. And it seems they, they may have conquered a wide area, conquering and pillaging as they went, finally arriving in America, maybe being chased out of certain countries. Almost like the lost tribes of Israel. We'll get to that later. But anyway, we're going to find out that they had a Hindu god with them, which is just so amazing. So we can trace it not only genetically, but also in, in terms of their religion. And you're going to say, Charlie, how the hell can we do this? We don't know their religion. We don't have a time machine. Charles, you need to show me the proof. And that's what we're going to do in this video. I'm going to show you the proof. So here we have one of the so-called Paracus textiles. And do you see, it looks like the octopus's garden or something. It could be Oana's. Who knows what's really going on? And this is a, a book about them. And these, these textiles were, guess how old they are? They're 2,000 years old. From about the time they say Tiwanaku was built. And so we can actually look at the textiles. And I'm going to show you that one of the textiles is uh, this guy, Shiva. And you're going to say, hang on a sec, Charlie. Now, India is about, oh, it's got to be about 10,000 kilometers away from Peru. What is an Indian god doing in Peru? It's easy. It's an Aryan god. The Aryan tribes, they, they, they went everywhere conquering as they went. They went to Ireland, to Iran. Maybe they were the ancient Israelites as well. So we're going to have a look. Maybe the Iron Age Israelites co-opted a story uh, from the earlier Bronze Age Israelites who were even maybe a different people. So this is the textile in question. And you're going to say, what a weird person. And so Ziggy Dan uh, on uh, Twitter showed me this. He has a, a YouTube channel and uh, he showed us this and he said, hmm, that's the that's the gate of the sun. That's the sun god, because this man, the sun god, uh, this 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 fella uh, is holding the sticks or the snakes. They're actually two snakes. So what's happening? What's happening? So is this is this him? So I'm going to read to you a description of Shiva. And you're going to see that this is, in fact, Shiva, the Aryan God. So I have an article here. Um, it's called uh, just it's the BBC website. Who is Shiva? So I'm just going to read that to you. And you look at Shiva while I'm reading. OK, here we go. Shiva is the third God of the Hindu Triumvirate, Vierate. okay, so three gods, that sounds familiar. The Triumvirate, uh, they, write, they write it funny, Triumvirate, Vierate. okay, uh, consists of three uh, gods who are responsible for the creation, upkeep, and destruction of the world. The two other gods are Brahma and Vishnu. Now, we'll get to their roles soon, it's very interesting. So, Brahma is the creator of the universe, while Vishnu is the preserver of it. Shiva's role is to destroy the universe in order to recreate it. Now, that is not true, because it depends on what Hindu you ask. And this religion is so old, it's the Stone Age religion, that there are different types of, 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 of this, this Hinduism. Um, so, they, they all, they all, they, 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 these roles are interchangeable. So, Shiva is also a, seen by some as a creator of the universe. Vishnu is seen by some as the creator of the universe. Maybe Brahma is seen as the creator of the universe because he is the universe. <laughs> we'll get to all this. So it says here, uh, Shiva is known to have untamed passion, which leads him to extremes in behavior. Now, straight away, that reminds us of Yahweh. And in fact, the God Iwa, Iwa, Yahweh, Shiva, it's obviously the, sh the same God that's in the Bible. And we'll get to why that's important as well. And... What, we'll get to, okay, what does Shiva look like? Um, it says, in representations as a man, Shiva always has a blue face and throat. And when I saw this picture, I thought, damn, he's Osiris. That's amazing. So a blue face and throat. Strictly speaking, his body is white. So, okay, well, that, that's a blue face, white body. That's Osiris, also known as Ptah. In his dead form, Osiris is the resurrected form. So it's the pyramid god. That's Okay, that's cool. And then it says... 
um, he's represented with the following features. So a third eye, the third eye represents wisdom, untamed energy. He can open the third eye in anger. Uh, karma was, K-A-M-A, was consumed by the fire that poured forth uh, from his third eye when he opened it in anger and only returned to life when Parvati intervened. Is the third eye here? It looks like another face on top, but he's got like this white crown, almost like an Egyptian crown. And now, another aspect of, of Shiva, the cobra necklace. So I'm going to read that. Look, two snakes, cobra necklace. This signifies Shiva's power over the most dangerous creatures in the world. Some traditions also say the snake represents Shiva's power of destruction and recreation. The snake sheds its skin to make way for a new, smoother skin. What else does he have? He's got the vibhuti. The vibhuti are three lines drawn horizontally across the forehead. Okay, so here's two lines. or well, there's a three thing up there. And uh, in white ash. They represent Shiva's all-pervading nature, his superhuman power and wealth. Also, they cover up his powerful third eye. So these are actually covering the third eye. Okay. Members of Shaivism, that's the Shiva worshippers in India, often draw vibhuti lines across their forehead. So now you know. And the trident, he should be holding a trident, so that's like Neptune, which represents the three functions of the Hindu triumvirate. Okay. So, it also says Shiva can be dressed uh, as in a simple animal skin uh, and in austere settings. Well, that reminds us of Hercules. So Hercules is obviously a Greek, the Greek version of Shiva, uh, who, who strangles two snakes in the cot at birth. And that's how it's come down to us in the Greek legend. So, this is incredible. This is Shiva. And this is also a, a, a pyramid god Ptah, because he's the, the dead body. This is incredible. So what the hell is this doing in Peru? And there's only one way this could be in Peru. If possibly the Aryans, who probably brought the same god to India, went to Peru. And since this is a paracast, I believe it's a paracast textile, that can only mean one thing. The long heads, the long skulls, were Aryans, and they brought this to Peru. Amazing. And there we have Shiva. Also, I believe, known as Yahweh. I've been looking for Yahweh forever. And finally, today, I've realized that Yahweh is Shiva. It's the same. It's almost the same word. Because if you, if you change ya a little bit, if you, it's, 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 it, to, if you, if you soften up sh, ya, ye, ye, it, it's like ya, it's like Yahweh. It's amazing. The cobra necklace, the snakes, the trident. And that is Shiva, uh, depicted as a trinity. Here is another, I'll make it bigger, another Paracas uh, drawing to show you how colorful they are. And I want to show you that in relation to how colorful the Indian drawings are. Look, that's an Indian drawing, an Aryan drawing. And it's just amazing. And I want to explain to you what is going on here. So here we have, this is from India, Shiva, the blue god in the middle. Another way of drawing him. And here we have Vishnu, the white god. So straight away we see the role, the Egyptian roles of Osiris the blue, and Ptah, the white god. When he's dead, he's mummified. And so they're almost, they're, 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 they're close. But in, and, and in fact, if you look up the article on Vishnu, if you look up the article on Shiva, they almost have the same role, corrupt, uh, creator and destroyer of the universe. And it depends on what, which Hindu you talk to as to which one is more important. And now... We look to the third god in the Trinity, and he's looking in four directions. Guess who this is? This is Brahma. This is world. And this explains the pyramid religion, because the pyramid has four sides. It's looking in four different directions at the whole world. And the Great Pyramid has the dimensions of the world incorporated into it. So they actually weren't joking when they said this is the world god. So this holy trinity is, in fact... The creator, in this case, it's Shiva, the creator, Vishnu, another aspect of the Trinity, and the world itself, the material form of the world, you could say almost, or the one who watches on the world, the pyramid. And he's even wearing pyramids, which is interesting. He's wearing four pyramids. And we've talked a lot about pyramids. India has the purest form of pyramids I've ever seen. Not only because they explain the pyramid. The Giza pyramid is a complete abstraction compared to this. And you have to look into the geometries to see what's represented. Here it's very simple. You have the planet as a hemisphere, the world, the Brahma. You have uh, Brahma also facing in four different directions. That's why it must be four-faced. And 
it's a, it's a trinity. So I guess here there's three or, or, or even more uh, uh, pyramids. And we explain this actually as the nine Germanic worlds because in cosmology there are nine worlds or even 12 worlds. So you might find a group of nine pyramids such as at Giza or 12 pyramids. And that was a first for this channel. And the, so a pyramid we've explained on this channel, it must have um, a world on it. It must have a sphere. It mu or, or at least that must be represented in the mathematics. It must have four sides. It must represent the world, Brahma. It must be in the center of the world as well, uh, somehow, geomantically, geometrically. And I've found pyramids in all countries based on these criteria. And you can see where pyramids are based on all this, where they're located. So it looks like the cone heads, in my opinion, were pre-Aryans. They went to India. And then other peoples co-opted and took over some of their ideas, such as the Jews, the lost tribe, the ones, the ones who are persecuted, the ones who need to find a home to live. Hey, they sailed all the way to America. And maybe their descendants left over in Palestine did become the Jews. And I'm going to show you something um, quite interesting indeed. So here we go. Let's look at the names of gods in Judaism. And it's not just Yahweh, which I think is Shiva. But look, there are other names of gods because there were lots of people passing through becoming Jews. One of them is the Tetragrammaton. And Straight away, tetra means four. So this must be the pyramid god, tetragrammaton. And you find this god in black magic as well, which shows uh, black magic comes from the same Aryan religion. Um, it doesn't really go into too much what tetragrammaton actually is. It's just a name. It goes into the 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 uh, the, the epigraphy and all this, blah, blah, blah. But being scholars, they're not going to tell you too much. The only one who's going to tell you stuff is us real scholars on YouTube telling you, the truth, and who are real scientists, because we do it for no money at all. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Um, L, L, you know, this is Baal, variations on Baal, uh, Sheva, I'm not sure, Yah, Yah is uh, Yahweh, obviously, Shiva. This is amazing. So anyway, guys, I really hope you enjoyed that video, that insight into the long skulls, um, uh, that uh, forced uh, the, the long scale people that forced to discover. Now that we know that there are separate people who reached America, we can look at their religion and see what their religion was. And it, it was seems in part the Aryan religion. And why not? Because the Aryans went everywhere. They went to Ireland, to Iran, maybe Japan, and why not America? Unbelievable. Anyway, guys. Well, hello, nice people. I had thought that was the end of the video, but apparently not, because what's happened is I've been wondering who the hell the blue god is, and it turns out it's a Hindu god called Sharaba. So here we have a ceramic bottle with feline face, 3rd century BCE, the face of a sna Now it says, the notice it says, the face of a snarling feline. So they go on about this feline cult. Well, hang on a sec. Forget the feline. Uh, this is just uh, possibly, uh, possibly Sharaba. Sharaba, the Hindu god. Here we have the third eye. So, does it mention the third eye? Hindus will see this as the third eye. Do, do they mention the third eye in the description? I think not, sir. Um, this is possibly Sharaba. It, it is what it is. It's, it, they think these are demons, cat demons, but what they actually are are the angry forms of the Aryan gods. Because the Aryan gods are, are quite interesting, and I'm going to have to research Hinduism a bit more, because these are the ancient gods of the whole world. So... Um, uh, this they, they have angry forms, and this is the angry form uh, of that god. And I think later generations of the, the uh, Americans might have thought, oh, well, hang on, those teeth, oh, they must be uh, saber-toothed cats or something. Uh, that's what they must be. They must be lions or tigers or something like that. Uh, but actually, uh, they are the angry form of the Aryan gods. So now let's look at Sharaba. So I've been wondering what the hell uh, these gods are. What's this? He looks just like the god we've seen earlier. Uh, th this could be a substitute for lines on the forehead. He's got the snakes. He's holding the snakes. What's going on? And why does he look different to the blue god? Well, it turns out it's a form of the Hindu god uh, Sharaba. There is Sharaba. Um, and uh, that is one form of Sharaba, but it's the form that looks like the American form of this god, as we shall see. You shall see... He looks exactly the same. Uh, this is a cat version of Sharaba. You see, Sharaba has legs going down, four legs in the air, uh, a huge tail. Um, and and, and, and uh, let, let's look at the next one. There we go. Legs in the air. Um, and this is seen by archaeologists as some kind of skull demon who, who, 
who grabs a skull, uh, who, who, who captures the dead. But actually, it's Shiva killing another god or subduing another god. Um, let's look at the next version. And you see the same thing. It looks like a zombie. And I've been wondering, hmm, he's got a blue face. So he, he looks like that other god we saw earlier. Um, but why is he different? Why is he now horizontal? And, and he, it's, it's because he was a, a kind of four-legged cow uh, who can jump or a dog who can, who can jump and fly. And uh, that's that. A huge tail. Uh, that's him. Uh, it, it, it goes on. There's another form. And I said, this, I called this the octopus's garden before, didn't I? I didn't know what, quite what this was. But the blue aroused my suspicion. And I thought, well, is this another form of Shiva slash Osiris? What the hell is going on? And actually, yes, uh, probably is. Probably is. Um, fascinating. So we're going to read the description of this god. Um, if you're not convinced, and you don't have to be convinced, that's okay. Um, uh, but we're going to read the description. So it says here, Shabara is part lion, part bird beast in Hindu mythology. Eight-legged and more powerful than a lion or an elephant. And in the totem pole video, or another video, I believe we actually said that Sharaba... That's right, in the Mayan video. We showed that Sharaba is depicted in Mayan... In, in that, sorry, in Irish Dark Age manuscripts. There are Hindu gods in Irish Dark Age manuscripts. And so there are in this. So I thought, does that mean the Irish went there? Or does it mean they're both Aryans? The long skulls are Aryans. And these guys are Aryans too. So it says here, possessing one ability to clear a valley in one jump. So that's possibly what he's doing here. He's clearing the valley in one jump. In later literature, Shabara is described as an eight-legged deer. I don't know if that's a deer or not. He's got some possible antler. The Shiva scriptures narrate that God Shiva assumed the form of Shabara to pacify Narashima, uh, or Narasima, the fierce man-lion avatar of Vishnu, worshipped by the Vaishnava sect. Well, that could be a sphinx, I guess. <laughs> the form is popularly known as Lord Sharaba or Sharabeshwara. And there's another longer word for that, which I won't pronounce. And it says it's in Buddhism as well, because Buddhism is uh, extremely ancient. Shabara appears in the Jataka tales as a previous birth of the Buddha. Oh, you know why? Because Buddha is a reincarnated body originally, and, and he has to be uh, an Osiris in order to become uh, a dead version, the 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 ptah, the body, and then he uh, he reincarnates. Presumably, that's why he's previous to the Buddha, because the Buddha keeps reincarnating. Uh, maybe. So anyway, um, so let's let's see. Um, in, uh, so there's the the Shaiva views uh, of this, um, and in these views, um, it says here, um, and this is quite interesting. Um, it's, it says, Narashima's wrath threatened the world. At the behest of the gods, Shiva sent uh, Virabda to tackle Narashima. When that failed, Shiva manifested as Sharaba. So he manifests as this form uh, in order to kill Narashima. Um, and he grows more angry and ferocious. So obviously this is a kind of reincarnating god as well. Uh, because he's got the blue, he's um, he's like Osiris, he's the blue man, he's like the Russian blue god. We've tackled that in earlier videos, who's also Osiris. This was an Aryan god all over the world. And when the Aryans went to America uh, in the form of the Long Skulls, they brought this religion to America. It's just brilliant. Okay, so um, it says here, um, and there are some long stories here, but it says here... Um, a, a Purana ends the story with gods fearing that Sharaba may not be able to control his rage and thus urging Shiva to give up his Sharaba form. Thereafter, Shiva dismembered Sharaba's form. His limbs were given away and his torso became a Kapalika. Kap, kapalika? Kapalika? That sort of means, that means church in Polish. I don't know what's going on there. But anyway, um, well, that's, a, that's a god or something. Anyway, so that could mean a totem. Uh, but, you know... This Aryan religion is the, is the totemic religion. It's uh, it's just amazing. There are other forms of Shiva. There's a white Ptah-like form, as you see here, um, where he's on fire and he's got a pyramid on his head. Um, just amazing. You can read all the descriptions yourself, but um, you know, it's, and it's a big article. Um, oh, here we go. I found it. Shiva's incarnation. So let's just read it together. It says here. Um, 
Shiva's two heads, two wings, eight legs of a lion with sharp claws and a long tail describes Shabara as black in color with four feet downwards and four feet uplifted with enormous body. So the black one is here. Um, that's interesting. Uh, yeah. And um, an enormous body, a long face, nose, nails, eight legs, eight tusks, a cluster of manes, a long tail. It jumps high, repeatedly making a loud cry. So that's possibly uh, what this is. He's, he's jumping or he's leaping across a valley uh, to slay the enemy. Um, and that, that's what is being depicted here. And that the form that is closest, see, that appears to be a, another form. As you see, it's a very complicated creature. That's why they're, they're trying to put the complexity in here in whatever way they could. Um, but the other form that looks like this is this form in the Mumaswaram temple in Sri Lanka. So Sri Lanka is actually, because they're on an island, they might have an earlier form of Hinduism than India. Um, look at that, you see? There we go. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. So uh, Shiva, in both his forms, in the Paracas burial shrouds, and they, they buried them in, in these, in these uh, little humpies made of blankets, uh, depicting these images. So possibly it looks like they were hoping for some kind of reincarnation. The long skulls wanted to live forever. Well, peeps, I don't think there's there's going to be any end to this. Uh, so the cat cult, where does it come from? We've all seen the feline cult, the cat cult. Uh, what's going on? Here we have something that looks like out of the Temple of Doom. Gee, that looks a bit uh, dodgy, doesn't it? Oh, well, but you see this god Narashima, the lion man, all over Southeast Asia. And you see him in the form I'm going to show you. Basically, you see these everywhere. Bali type, because the, the Hindus did conquer Bali a thousand years ago or more. Um, there, you see, you see this got everywhere. So this is a right. This is the main rival. The Hindus, um, lots of migrations of Aryans and other tribes went into India. So it's like Egypt, millions of gods for this reason. So, uh, one of the other main gods is Vishnu and the rival Hindus say, well, Vishnu is the creator of the universe. And, uh, the Shiva people say, well, no, hang on a second. What happened? You see what happened was, uh, Shiva turned, uh, Vishnu turned into this other form, Narashima, and then he was, uh, killed off by the angry version of Shiva. So they gave Shiva that angry version we've just discussed, uh, Shabara. Uh, but basically, let me just read this to you, and, uh, there's something sphinx-like about this as well, whether the sphinx was a dog or a lion. Take your pick, you've got, you've got the gods available to you. Um, but it basically says here, and this is where the cat cult comes from. The Native American cat cult. It's surely this, uh, this Narashima version of Vishnu. So, uh, Vishnu turns into Narashima. So, so, so the gods, the gods have superhuman, super, for, superhero forms. It's not good enough to just be a god. <laughs> uh, which is quite interesting because a god's something else. Are they just humans from elsewhere? Ooh. So anyway, it says here, it's a fierce avatar of the Hindu god Vishnu who incarnates in the form of part lion and part man to destroy evil and end religious persecution and calamity on earth, thereby dis restoring dharma. Uh -huh. So, upper human torso and lower body. Um, but I do think the Sphinx, by the way, in Egypt is in fact um, the great god, the great dog of Germanic mythology who will uh, jump up and swallow the sun because he's closest to the sun on the plateau. That could be a lost aspect also of this mythology. Anyway... Narashima iconography shows him with a human torso, a lower body, a lion face and claws, typically with a, uh, the demon in his lap, uh, whom he's in the process of uh, defeating. And defeating, is that what you call it? Okay. Uh, the demon is the powerful brother of uh, Hiranyaksha, who had been previously defeated by Vishnu, who had hated Vishnu for defeating his brother. Okay, so it, it goes on and on. And you can read this by yourself. Um, I just wanted to show you, this is probably where the cat cult uh, comes from, and this is probably that other, that god that I showed you, uh, because I was wondering, well, well, what's the cat form? Because there's clearly a cat, a cat version of Shabara. Uh, we, so what's the cat doing there? Or is that a cat? Maybe what? Well, I don't know. Is it a, is it the deer? Maybe it's a deer. But if it is a cat, and, and look, they have said, oh, this is a feline. Oh, look, it's a, it's got the feline. Is it Vishnu? It must be with the third eye. Uh, there we go. That's where Vish that's how Vishnu had generated the cat cult in Latin uh, in the the Latin Americas. Thanks.